So I am from Red Hat. Um, Red Hat is the open source leader. Uh, we sell free software. Um, and still we make uh, around $2.9 billion per year. So as you can see, uh, importance or the gravity of our company that 450 out of 500 Fortune 500 companies, they use our software. We are in uh, cloud software, we are in uh, operating system, and uh, mobile software, middleware, etc. So all of our software is related to enterprise uh, systems. And we are a global company. So why CAM needs AI? Um, there are several sessions going on uh, in this conference that talk about uh, enterprise search. So enterprise search or any kind of search, it has a flaw. You go there and you search based on a keyword. But why are you searching? So the systems that you, uh, that you are using to search, they don't know what is your intent. So if you say, like, I am searching for a uh, car, then why are you searching for a car? Are you looking for to buy a car, rent a car, or is it a toy, or is it a car, or something else? So the system does not know about that thing. So that's why you need artificial intelligence to add that intelligence to the system so that it knows what is your intent to search. And most of the time when in the organization you are performing a search, you are searching because you are performing a business activity. By business activity mean, for example, I am writing a proposal. And I am writing a proposal for healthcare industry. So what will I search? Will I search a sample proposal? But then if I search sample proposal, how would it know that I am looking for a healthcare industry proposal that is from past? And it is related to a specific customer. So from that perspective, if you see, so there are so many things that are involved here. And what happens that when you go and start searching, you spend like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, just to find out right kind of information. And even if your system is really smart, it will give you tons of information. It, it will basically narrow down your search, but still the onus will be on you to find out which content is relevant to you. But the nirvana or the uh, ultimate goal, the system that uh, we are developing is, that the person don't, need, uh, they don't even need to search. They actually just go and then basically they say that I am performing this business activity and these are the parameters. Give me everything that I need to know. So why knowledge management needs artificial intelligence? So I divided them in three, uh, like three parts. So if you look at these four, goals of a knowledge management program. So right now, we say connect right people to the right knowledge at the right time. So this is about now. But in future, what will happen, what, what uh, our organization is going towards to connect right pe person with the right knowledge before time. Not even the right time. So why wait for the 11th hour to provide that information? Why not give it right away? So the forecasting is one of the most important part of it because you know once your organization forecasts that okay I, we will be doing these things in this quarter or the next quarter so you know what is going to happen. So why wait for the uh, time uh, at the 11th hour and provide that information? Why not build the people, enable people beforehand uh, so that they can deliver faster? And the next thing is Enable associates. So I provided, so uh, my requirement is that I want to get to uh, London from here in eight hours. And then when you search, you say like, okay, here is the aer uh, um, aircraft. You take it and uh, reach to London in eight hours. But how do I drive that uh, aeroplane? I don't know how to drive that or how to fly that, sorry. Um, so in that scenario, you have to enable your associates that here is the thing that here is the knowledge that says how you can do it, but uh, train those associates to use that knowledge. That's the second goal of knowledge management. And then the third one is harvest created knowledge. What happens like you, there are in a global organization, uh, people are uh, generating knowledge, they are using Slack channel, they are using emails, they are making decising, but how do you harvest that information? It is, it is unstructured data. 
So you have to harvest that created knowledge. You don't wait for people to submit that knowledge to you or in a knowledge base to um, get it available for other people. And the last thing is that you want to maintain and upgrade available knowledge. Technology is changing so fast. You know, uh, the blockchain was there, and then the artificial intelligence came in. Uh, there is cloud computing, and then so many things. Like today, you are uh, programming in one language. Tomorrow, it is like Ruby on the rails or something like that. So how are you going to keep up with all these changing technologies? The information that my organization uses, it, it becomes obsolete in six months. Um, so whatever is relevant today, it is not relevant after six months. So how do you keep pace up with that? So that's why you need artificial intelligence for the fourth uh, point. The next one is enhance the strengths of the existing organization. You know, human brain has so much capabilities, but it can process only that knowledge which is, which is known to that, uh, that person. If I, pro, if I am uh, given an object that I have never seen, I will not be able to analyze what that object is until unless I have some prior experience of seeing that particular object. So in order to um, support a person, we have to provide analytical capabilities that can only be provided by a machine, not by the people. Because if there are like 200 different nodes uh, of data and you have to actually uh, drive something, you need uh, uh, a machine for doing that. The next one is uh, culture. So. Uh, Organizational culture is a big thing. You know, uh, the way a culture or a country or people react, it is completely different. So what one uh, people from one country will react in a certain situation, the other uh, people and from other country may not react the same way. So we have to support our cultures because we, we cannot make the, we cannot change the whole culture of a country if you are a global organization. So you have to make sure that you are supporting them in such a way so that they are also productive. And then the resources. Uh, so knowledge management team, um, sometime like we are a support organization, we may not have all the uh, budget or the people within our organization. So we have to make sure that um, we uh, use certain ways so that uh, we can serve our audience really well using the artificial intelligence. And the next thing is, there are so many knowledge management challenges. In the current, uh, if, you, if you see that, uh, in enterprise there are so many internal sources, five or six different systems, or like many of them. Uh, and then there are external systems, so you have to bring outside knowledge within the organization. Not only your organization building the knowledge, but outside world is also building, creating knowledge. So you have to, be, you have to bring outside knowledge within organization as well as reuse whatever your organization has created. Um, and then uh, so many people are generating knowledge across the organization, so many teams are generating it, and then the associates. So global associates, they are creating or building knowledge um, in different languages. So, have, so if the language is created in uh, Japanese, uh, sorry, if uh, uh, knowledge is created in Japanese, then you have to make sure that it is also available in other languages. And then, uh, as I said, uh, the Czech technology and uh, businesses and people are changing rapidly. So um, one of the uh, company, which is a very large company uh, that has uh, 360,000 uh, associates. So in f last five years, 50% of their workforce changed. And this is current. So in last five years, if 50% of their workforce changed, that means the whole culture is, uh, will be in a, a shift of changing. So from that perspective, we have, we have to make sure that uh, we, can, we take care of uh, uh, the changing world, changing technology, changing businesses. And one uh, solution does not fit all. So uh, the um, capabilities and uh, levels of uh, associates, it is different. Uh, they they um, behave differently. They uh, react differently. So we have to make sure that everyone uh, is producing at the same level. So these are the various things that actually warranted uh, use of artificial intelligence uh, in our organization. So what, how did uh, we do this? So as you can see, like there are people, uh, there are teams, there are images and videos, there are certain types of uh, artifacts, and then processes, tools, documents, and training. So 
these are like some of the entities that we call can provide us uh, knowledge or they can help us in uh, doing our business activities. So I have been actually uh, saying again and again business activity because in any organization, whatever you do, apart from chit chatting or basically, uh, apart from chit chatting or uh, drinking coffee, everything that you do, it is, it is part of a business activity. You just think about yourself, like whatever you have been doing or whatever work you have been doing, it is, it is a business activity that you are carrying out. So in order to do that, you meet people, you, uh, you work with the teams, you see if there are images or videos that you, uh, you use, you follow processes, you use tools, you, you uh, review documents, you create documents, or you take training or give training. So how do we, uh, so, so what we did, we used all these entities and classified them. Classify means like uh, if there are people who are certain, who, who are expert in certain area, if there are teams who are uh, there, we classified each and everything and treated them as a resource, as an entity that can be used, that can, uh, can be helpful in performing a business activity. And I will talk about it like uh, in the next slide, how, uh, how it basically fell together. So then, once you see all those people, like, like uh, just relate the last slide and look at this pro business process. So I just used one sample business process of writing a proposal. So it has five steps. Sorry about the wrong indenta indentation because of the uh, because of this projector, it is not uh, properly uh, rendered. So it is a simple process. It looks really very simple. So let's start from the basic simplicity. So there are like five steps in, the, in this process. This first is pre-qualify. So whenever you are write a proposal, you work on, you, you, you take a look at that. Do we have capabilities to bid on this proposal? You pre-qualify. So there are certain steps, certain things. So in order to do that, how do you figure out that this is the right opportunity for us? How will you figure it out? You just give it to a new person, how will, it, how will that person know? So that's where you, there is a training. So that person can go and get the training. And then there are templates or checklists that are available for them. It, those templates or checklists are in English, French, or in multiple languages that they can see. And then there is how to guide and frequently asked questions that people ask. And then also there are sample examples that they can, they can review. And then you list SMEs, subject matter expert, where they can go and contact them in case if they have any questions. So if you see like everything related to this particular phase is provided only at a single location. So that person does not have to go anywhere else to find out where to look for this information. Now you will be asking like how do you use AI in this scenario? So let's take an example. So we have more than 14 products. And then there are like uh, multiple industries, healthcare, insurance, entertainment, financial, right? And if I am qualifying a proposal for finance industry and one of, for my, one of my product, how will these items be provided to me? And that's, that's exactly where artificial intelligence and taxonomy come in place. So you have specified your five, uh, five phases, and then based on your, if you are working on uh, a, uh, writing a proposal for OpenShift or for finance industry, these items will be listed accordingly. And that's exactly happening. So if you see, like, not every phase will have every single thing. It, it, like the items that are listed here, they will change as per the, uh, as per the phase. And these, this process will change based on the geography. In, some, in certain teams, they will not have like the uh, step number three. In certain uh, team, they will have extra steps in there. So you can have like the variations of a business process and then the variations of the document that are listed here. So by using, by integrating uh, content with the business process steps, you can easily avoid a need for the search. Now the question arises, how do you maintain this information? 
So whoever is actually reviewing this uh, or working on this one and they find that some information is not up to date, they can go and uh, flag that particular artifact that this is not correct. If a SME has left the organization, that SME will also, will, will also be removed from the, from the list. So this is how actually keep you, you maintain it, and, but at the same time, then uh, in the back end, the artificial intelligence engine is also working. Uh, so for example, uh, if a particular technology went obsolete, so in uh, back like uh, uh, six, seven years ago, we retired one of the, uh, one of the product, and the, all the documents associated with that product got obsolete in just a single day. So all the, all the documents that are associated with that kind of product which is retired, they are automatically flagged as obsolete. So this is like the most important thing uh, that we did, that we integrated content with the business process, with the business process or business activities that people perform. If you just think about it, how, how important it is for us, like how easy it is for us to, uh, to save people's time because they don't have to go now to search for training or they don't have to go anywhere else to search for templates uh, and they don't have to figure out who is going to help me. And then as soon as they basically submit something, a deliverable, it automatically ban uh, goes out to the relevant team that are responsible for uh, approving that particular deliverable. So the legal process and then the marketing team and everything that is basically running behind this process. So all teams are connected there and then the, uh, all the training that is associated with the, uh, with the process that has been taken care by the system. So, so during the process like how, how did we keep up with the machine learning? So we used deep machine learning to model, this, uh, to model our processes. So for example, if a process has been written for a project manager, but it has been used by, it has been multiple time used by some other roles, then the system actually promotes that particular process for other roles also. So it keeps on learning uh, how things are being used. If a particular geography, Asia Pacific or Latin America, they are finding certain things are useful. So the uh, algorithm uh, automatically promotes that uh, stuff or content or the process to that particular uh, uh, audience. So what did we use uh, as part of this? So this is the technology. Uh, Lucidworks is already here. Um, so Solar Search uh, used Python for the artificial intelligence implementation. Uh, Alfresco is our core content management system and then Alfresco uh, activity workflows are being used for uh, content management and approval, etc. Uh, PIVIC is being used for analytics, um, for analyzing uh, what data is being used. Um, and these are the algorithms that were used. Uh, these are the AI algorithms. So XGBoost and uh, Neural Net, they are for future because they, we do not have uh, enough data to run those uh, algorithms at this time. So what are the takeaways from uh, this particular uh, implementation? Actually, I'm running before time. So, um, so these are the benefits. Uh, we empowered our associates to take uh, right decisions. Uh, they can take the right decisions uh, and they don't have to actually worry about uh, system automatically helps them to um, take the right decisions. They are always using latest and greatest content. They are always using the latest uh, uh, information and they are uh, <clears throat> um, always like we have the information uh, available that is always current, latest and current. Um, so one of the main advantage, like these are the various advantages and the, if you see the third bullet item, this is like really important. So simplify pro ch uh, process, change, process change management. So as you saw the, in that process, there are like five steps. But tomorrow if you want, you can in introduce a sixth step also. And you don't have to tell users that we, now you have to follow the sixth step because they do not know how, they do not have the prior knowledge 
how many steps are there. So you can easily change the steps. And at the back end, if there is an approval process or, some, uh, or certain other uh, approval process are there, multiple phases of approval is there, you can also change that. So today, the approval is going to person A or team A. Tomorrow, the approval can go to person B or team B. So, the, so those approval process, you are keeping those things isolated from the user. User does not have to, uh, does not need to know about the finer details of a process or finer details of a process phases. And by doing that, they can, easy, they can now focus on their core responsibility for what they, they are hired for. So if they are hired for writing a proposal, they will write excellent or, uh, and wonderful proposal. They don't have to worry about where to look for the information and spend or waste their time in finding the information again and again. So most of the time when you go and uh, try to find the information, uh, we ran uh, a survey. The, uh, our associates were spending around like 20 minutes, minutes per day in finding the information that they are looking for. Because you know what happens that once you find the information, uh, you don't know if that is the latest or greatest information. There are like multiple sources, multiple systems are there. And if you are searching for the uh, information and there are like the 100 documents are given to you, now you have to figure out which document is latest and greatest. So those, all those things are actually uh, uh, taken away from user. They don't have to worry about which, uh, if whatever they are looking at is the latest and greatest and the holy grail. So what are our, what are, uh, our observations? Um, so when uh, we started this project, uh, we started with just 200 documents, just to uh, give an idea that how does it work. And with 200 documents, you know, based on the length of the document and title, uh, it, like the algorithm actually failed. Algorithm was like just uh, accurate as like 70%. It was giving 70% good results. Um, so, what we need to, so what we needed to do um, that we pro, we needed to provide good amount of training data, because you know, uh, just like a human uh, brain, you have to give a sufficient knowledge to the person in order to uh, reach a conclusion, and that's exactly what happens with the machine. So machine has to learn. It you have to provide all the permutations and combinations of the information so that it can learn from that and figure it out and reach to the right conclusion. So the training data is a very important part of it. So if you do, if you do not have training data, your system is not going to work well. Um, and as you were uh, listening to the morning keynote, that AI is not a silver bullet. So it cannot solve all your problems. And human intervention is required. So whenever there is a conflict, machine cannot decide. Which, uh, which one is the right thing, and there is a conflict, the person has to actually figure it out what needs to be done with that particular conflict, and they have to resolve it. And once they resolve it, um, the algorithm will learn that particular uh, information. So another challenge was like uh, align people and process for adoption. So what happens that uh, most of the time people say, no, they don't want to uh, follow processes. Everyone wants to be free. They do not want to follow processes. So you, uh, this is like a challenging part, and we have to make sure that people understand what we are proposing. And the processes don't need to be very rigid in the organization. They, it has to, they have to be flexible so that people, and they, they give uh, enough opportunities to people uh, to make changes to the process as long as it does not affect the outcome. And you, we have to align the process and people for better option. And uh, I already talked about uh, intervention. Human intervention is definitely required. Uh, and the deep learning actually takes time. It is not something that uh, from the day one, your system will start uh, giving great results until, unless you have the training data. So if, you, uh, if your training data is not uh, large enough or big enough, it will, uh, the system will take time to learn itself and they're uh, giving great results. So when to use AI, so large and uh, unstructured data sets. So unstructured, when I say like the emails are there uh, and people are using now these the chatting tools. Uh, uh, 
like the rocket chat and the slack that they are using so whatever decision is made on those slack and uh, rocket chat they are not communicating so uh, in that scenario the data is unstructured you can use artificial intelligence to derive to uh, to get the knowledge nuggets out of it um, so many information sources are there uh, you know an enterprise that this is the case with all the enterprises that uh, the, there are so many information sources so in that scenario artificial intelligence can definitely help um, and the when the knowledge is changing rapidly as i said in my organization the, uh, the document that are now they will be obsolete in six months so if the uh, knowledge uh, changing rate is like so rapid the ai can really help you to keep uh, keep up with the uh, changing knowledge. I like those uh, last two items really uh, much. So push, push knowledge to unaware user. So as you saw then uh, in this example, uh, when I showed the diagram for uh, process, so the user does not know what is the template. User does not know if there is a training available for writing a proposal. User does not know who are the subject matter of, uh, experts. So you are actually providing them, you are pushing information to them that this is the information that would be useful when you are writing a proposal. So, that's, uh, so in that scenario, the uh, AI really plays a major role when you want to make users aware, aware who are not aware of the knowledge. And uncover the unknown, so this is like really interesting. So um, one of the teams uh, who are responsible for uh, uh, creating knowledge uh, so that like people can use them. They are creating like they are spending so much time and building, uh, creating documents which are really great. They are very good looking great documents. But when you go out and ask users, um, what do you think about those documents? They say like they have never used them. So then what's the point of creating some documents that uh, are not being used by people, right? So you uncover the unknown by using the artificial intelligence and putting this uh, in there that what are the items that are being used, what people are looking for that is not available, or what people are using most that you need to create more. So this is, uh, so these are the AI uh, artificial intelligence candidates for us that we are going to take next. Uh, uh, we have already started working on that. So enterprise search, uh, are, it, it is a good candidate. However, our focus is basically to integrate enterprise search also into the, our system. Um, and then the knowledge base, uh, so there are like multiple knowledge bases uh, that can also get benefit from the artificial intelligence. Um, subject matter expert locator, uh, training systems, business processes. Training systems are really going to be uh, uh, get benefited from the artificial intelligence because you know there are there is so much training, uh, so many trainings are available. So if you see if uh, an organization that has a, a very good uh, university within uh, inside, and then there is a um, uh, external. Uh, training systems, then there is a massive online open source uh, courses available. So if you see all those things, they're like tons of training is available at this point of time. And you know, the, because the technology is changing, the environment is changing rapidly, employees have to keep up with the changing environment and they have to keep their skills upgraded again and again. So how do you make sure that the people are getting the right set of training when they need it? And that's what, I was, that's what I mentioned in the beginning, that enable people and make sure that the peoples are, people are ready when they need to deliver something. So in a, start training them beforehand. So that will be, so training systems are a really good candidate for implementing artificial intelligence. So this concludes my session. Uh, so does anyone, have any question? Yes, sir. Do you have any uh, metrics on the activity? For example, are people taking more training around proposals, using more checklists, uh, using examples, and do you have any outcome measures like the yes. higher success rate on proposals? 
Yes, yeah. So uh, that's what, like, that's how we came to know. So uh, these documents are being created and then they are not used, or the documents that are created by someone else, they are being used more. Uh, so yes, uh, that's how we basically keep track of these things, yes. Yeah, really right. Have you seen like that? Number of proposals, like number of proposals delivered, uh, definitely. So we are uh, we are delivering more proposals with the same workforce, that kind of things. Yes. So you know, like in our, in our organization, like we have people across the globe, and they are um, they speak different languages. So it becomes like really difficult for us to keep the quality consistent across the globe. So by using this, this, technology, this, uh, this tool, we are pushing information to people. So, and like people are using, so when the reference uh, is like same for everyone, they are using same references and same, they are taking same training, they are using same templates. So, so the deliverable quality actually is consistent. Otherwise, like what happens, so if there is a rock star in your team, that rock star actually creates rock star proposals and then always wins. But then there is a person who is not so rock star. Uh, most of us, like me, uh, they are average people. So uh, what happens? Like, so how do you take these people at the same level so that all of all of us are winning? You know, just winning one person is not important. So that's why, like, these uh, this uh, this really helped us to uh, keep the uh, uh, deliverable quality consistent across the globe. You will have to speak up. <laughs> What tools are the templates? Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, that's great. So uh, internally, we use uh, Google. Uh, and uh, so the templates are, uh, so if they, uh, if they are, they can be in a spreadsheet and slides, uh, depending on the presentation. So if you are giving a presentation to customer, it will be uh, in the slide format. If it is a document, you are writing a proposal, it will be a Google Doc document. Or we have the open, uh, we also use open uh, documents, uh, LibreOffice, et cetera. So these uh, templates are also available in that format. Yes. Yes, yeah, so, so what happens like uh, once, uh, as I said that uh, probably I, uh, I missed that one. So if a person is working on a proposal or working on anything, any deliverable, uh, so in, once they are done with, the, with that particular artifacts, they can submit it back to the system. So that's how, we, uh, that's how we harvest the information. So if you think, if the user thinks that uh, the deliverable is of good quality that can be reusable for people, they can submit it back from the system and it is really, uh, it, uh, and then it is uh, classified uh, through the AI algorithm and put it at the right place. Yes. Yeah, so, the, the, so yeah, that's a great question. So um, it, it is a business process automation, uh, exactly. And it is connected with a con, uh, content management system. That's how they are connected together. So business process tool, uh, like uh, we design the process using the uh, business designer uh, tool. That's how we design the process. And then uh, as I, uh, if you remember the slide, in one of the slides I said that we uh, treat processes also as an entity. So people can search on those processes also. So they are also classified. So once you search for the process, I say like, I am writing a proposal. And then once you write that, uh, you will be listed as a process. And then you can click on that. And then you can move forward executing that process if you want to. You can instantiate that and start working on that. Yeah. So one
yeah so, uh, so so the question is that uh, what if that person does not uh, publish so you know this is, this happens in all the organizations and that's the uh, uh, that is all about the next generation knowledge management system so people are chatting over the chat and then people are creating these documents they the, all those documents are created in a central repository so this uh, so there are uh, so this system actually harvests the information from that repository based on like uh, based on the accessibility who can access those documents it sets up all those uh, permissions properly and harvest the information classify it and then publish back to the uh, back to the system that's how it does otherwise what happens that if you uh, put the onus on people that they have to uh, submit it back they may submit it they may not submit it some people uh, uh, like to have their information with them all the time they do not want to uh, share but this this is how you uh, this is how like uh, we are going to uh, force people to uh, submit the information you had a question Yeah, so uh, so it it it, it is uh, uh, depending on like what uh, system we are using. So we use, we heavily use tags for, and then uh, uh, then we also use categorization of Alfresco. So uh, so uh, those are the two things that we are using to uh, keep track of the content and the processes. Any other question? So if there is no questions, I will give you seven minutes back. Uh, and here is my contact information. Um, so uh, feel free to reach out to me in case if you have any questions. Uh, Red Hat is an open source organization. We love to work for free, so don't worry about it. Just send in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you.